and he assigns them boundaries and he assigns them rules. Uh, everything in a season has a rule and a boundary. See, to operate outside the boundaries of the earth is not wise. To plant a crop outside the seasonal boundary is pointless. You can decide you want to plant peas right now. They're not going to come up. Not because it's not a lack of work. Not because you didn't plant the right seed, but you get it outside of the season. Y'all yeah. better hear me. This, this is why certain crops you can't get inside the stores because they are out of season right now. And when they're out of season, to try to operate outside their boundary is pointless. To try to harvest outside the boundary is a waste of time. I want, I want those peas now. And so I'm going to pick them right now, but they've not come to maturity yet. I, I, I want this orange now. I want to pick it now. It's not come to maturity yet. And when you do that, you are wasting your time. I want to ask y'all a question real quick. How much time and energy have you wasted trying to operate against the rules of the season? All right, now. How much time and energy have you wasted when God said this season is over, but you still want to operate inside this season? Give that. Over, but you still want to operate within that time. And God is saying, You are wasting your time because I have set rules to every season. Uh -huh. There's certain things you cannot do outside of a certain season. Yeah, right. And so that's how the Bible views seasons. Really quickly, let's talk about how we view seasons in the Spirit. Uh -huh. I'll be real when I preach this real quick because I want to preach to adults and I want to preach to people who are mature in God, right? So one of the things we see seasons as time of blessings and favor. Uh huh. Every time I hear about a season that's out of the house of God, it's about blessings and faith. Uh -huh. uh, we think uh, that seasons are just times when God is blessing us and we are walking in favor. It's a time when we walk in prosperity or authority and things seem to fall in place for us. We, we also see seasons in a very individualistic manner. Yeah, we say, it's my season. Y'all know that some of y'all won't get this at all, but this is just me. I'm, I'm a Seinfeld fanatic. I love Seinfeld. And, and one episode of Seinfeld, when George, he, he had things working in his favor, and he said, I declare this the summer of George. <laughs> this is my summer. And, then, and, and this is how we operate in our season, that we tell somebody, it's my season. That's right, man. It's my season. We're very individualistic. However, the Bible seldom speaks in individualistic terms. That's right. Seasons affect many people for designated times and for designated purposes. If your season only benefits you, it, is, it probably was not designated by God. All right. Because God says he is our father and he does and to do, and he is too great to do things to just benefit one person. He ordains time for his children, not one child. All right. So I learned something that sometimes it's not just my season. It's a season when God is doing things. And I'm one of his many children who are now walking in this authority, who are now walking in this prosperity. But it's not just my season. It is not the summer of Daniel. Come on, Come on. Right. It's quiet. We don't want to hear that. Because we just want things to benefit us. But we don't want to read what the Bible says that he is our father. Uh -huh. And because we see the purpose of season as only blessings and only favor, we neglect to understand that we should be doing something in every season. Every season. Oh, I'm going to preach God. I'm not like this. Okay. We should be doing something in every season. You are not designed to be idle when you don't see blessings and don't see favor. Yeah. That's what we want to do. You know, it's not my, my season right now, so I'm just going to sit still and wait on God. Me. It, it's not my time to, to, to be prosperous so, because I'm not prospering. I'm not blessed being blessed. I'm just going to sit here and just wait on God. God said, I did not design you to be idle in any season. Every season is not one of outward blessing and favor. I've learned this. Every season, you're not going to be walking in blessing and favor just like that all the time. They're not outwardly, I will say. We only get excited about harvest season. All right. I'm going to make you really mad because I've very seldom seen conferences that talk about anything but harvest season. It's a harvest season, yeah. right? It's a harvest conference. We never talk about sowing conferences. Come on. We talk about working conferences. We only get excited about harvest season, but truthfully, is there are other seasons. And sometimes your current season is designed to prepare you for blessings and favor. So stop waiting on the season of harvest while neglecting the other seasons, or you will have nothing to harvest when harvest season comes. Yeah. This is why sometimes we, we sit here and we say, we say, well, God is doing a thing of harvest. 
And remember I told you this, it's not individualistic. He does a certain thing for everybody. Everybody has a certain harvest at that certain time. But if you're not putting anything in the ground, well, baby, I'm going to be harvesting. It does not mean that you're going to harvest anything. Oh, we got mad on that one, didn't we? Because we want the harvest season, but we don't want to talk about the other seasons. That's right. Let me tell you something. This is a season to sow. Yes, it is. Make sure that you sow. Amen. Tell somebody, make sure you sow. Make sure you sow. Let me tell you something. Y'all know where I'm going with this. You cannot reap a harvest without sowing. That's right. You can't reap a harvest. You know, but when God is going to do certain things for certain people, when this season comes, you know, I I I, I have I had a they did not have a garden last year. The season for harvest came. If I had nothing inside the ground, it did not matter. The season was there, but I did not benefit because I put nothing in the ground. Nothing. Now, Elder may have benefited because he had something in the ground, but I had nothing in the ground. See, you have to put something in the ground. Sowing is a concept of planting what you want so you can receive a harvest of the same thing. That's right. Once again, I will tell you. You're going to receive what you put in the ground. That's right. Galatians 6 and 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever, for whatever one sows, that shall he also reap. That's right. You cannot plant carrots and expect cabbage greens. That's right, Elder. You cannot plant watermelons and expect cantaloupes. That's right. That is not how it works, folks. It works. He says, whatever you sow, that's what you're gonna get back. That's what you get. Whatever you want to receive is what you want or what you what you must sow. If you want money, you gotta sow money. That's right. I cannot sow good feelings towards you. I cannot sow good good favor towards you and want money back. That's right. If I want money, I gotta sow money. That's right. That's why when I go to the store and buy seeds, I don't just say it don't matter what seeds you give me, I'm gonna get what I want to get back. No, when I go to the store, I tell them I need carrot seeds, I need cabbage seeds, I, I need jalapeno pepper seeds. Because I'm not going to just put something in the ground and expect anything to come back. What I put in the ground is what I want to see. That's right. So if you want money, baby, you got to sow money. That's right. Amen. You don't believe me? This is not even just, this is a concept that God made that may not even be in the sense that we talk about just churchy. Look at this. If I want it to get a blessing back from a stock, and I want money back from that stock. I got to give them money. I don't give them support. I don't give them a pat on the back and say, Nike, you're doing a good job, Nike. Nike, you're doing a great job, Nike. And, and, and when those dividends come back, I want you to bless with some money. No, no, Nike said, no, no, we have shareholders. We're going to bless those who sold into this company. And when they sold into this company, we're going to give you what you gave us. I do not give them money for stock. Y'all give me back shoes. I don't want shoes. I want money. Right. I didn't sell shoes, so I don't want shoes back. I want money. Amen. You get what you sow. Whatever you sow. Now, now, here's the truth. If you want honor, you got to honor others. That's right. Say that, Elder. I'm going to try my best to calm down. I appreciate it. But sometimes we talk about nobody respects me. That's right. Everybody overlooks me. Nobody is looking out for me. Uh, How many birthday parties have you been to? How many? Yeah. How many times did you tell somebody had a birthday? Uh-huh. How many birthday parties did you send out? Uh-huh. How many times did you honor somebody else? Yes. When they get an achievement. Uh-huh. But when your achievement comes, nobody shows up. Uh-huh. I had to tell a man of God once. Because he was talking about the past anniversary. Now he was talking about, you know, trying to get people to come out and say, but you didn't go to anybody past anniversary. Uh-huh. So, so what makes you think they're going to honor you? Uh-huh. When you didn't solve it. Hard but you want everybody to come to yours. Uh-huh. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. But we want honor, but do we so honor? That's right. We want, we say, and I, I, I said this before, and I, and I say it again, I, I'm not, this person going to lie to people. I don't lie and tell people that, you know, I don't receive honor. I don't, nobody ain't there for me. Nobody never support me. Because I support people. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And because I support people, it comes back to me. That's right. Now, maybe that's no story, it's a different story. But I'm lying that people who always talk about nobody supports me, nobody takes care of me, because you're not supporting nobody else. That's right. Nobody honors me. You're not honoring anybody else. That's right. But I've seen people who honor people, they are always honored. Yes. Amen. Right. My, 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 uh, my, my, uh, uh, Spiritual big sister, amen. Uh, 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 Pastor Benton, well, uh, First Lady Benton, she 
she was someone whoever she went, she honored people. Just being honest, she would honor, she would honor, she would honor she'd make us feel so honored. Then you know what? To the day that she passed away, people honored her. Yeah. We'd drive all the way to Texas to go be with her. Yeah. We, we, we would make sure she had a program, she always had people inside there. You know why? She honored people. That's right. Y'all get mad at me, y'all want to. This is why we do that. And in church people, we want something that we don't want to give. That's right. Say that. We come in church and we get mad at people because we never hurt anybody else. Uh-huh. You preaching? Yes, sir. Help us out, yeah. mm. and, and, and if we ever want to break this spirit, you got to sow some honor. Break it. Amen. You got to sow some honor. That's right. Amen. This is why I thank God this man of God honors this ministry. Yes. I thank God for that. That woman of God honors this ministry. So therefore, it is up to me to make sure my church that we honor these people. Yeah. Because whatever we sow, we're going to get back. That's right. I never asked him to come over here. I never said, I want you to come to my church. But you know, he said, no, I'm going to honor you. So therefore, it's my job to honor them. Yeah. That's why he said, well, Pastor, they come every Sunday, but you recognize them. Baby, I got to honor them. Yeah. Because they honored me. And if I won't honor, I must honor someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like this, but this one is hard. Right. If you want favor, you got to show some favor. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. you want favor from people, but do you ever show favor? That's right. Do you ever bless somebody with something they don't deserve? That's right. Do you ever give somebody something they don't even deserve, but you want people to give you that which you don't deserve? Uh-huh. Ooh, it gets quiet inside uh-huh. inside. You want somebody to highly favor you, to treat you like Joseph, but whatever Joseph went, he gave people favor. That's yeah. right. He went inside Potiphar's house, he treated Potiphar's house as though it was his house. He favored that man's house, so part of why I had to favor him. Y'all yeah. pretty good. When he was in prison, he honored the prisoners so well that they had to favor him. Yeah. When he was in the Pharaoh's house, he honored Pharaoh's house so much that Pharaoh had to favor him. Yeah. Whatsoever you sow, yes. Come on, yes. you want grace, you gotta give grace. That's yes, right. You can't want the law for everybody else. You want grace for yourself. You preach it. Yes, sir, Pastor. Okay, that, we, we get quick about that, don't we? We can put up the law on somebody else, but we won't brace for ourselves. That's right. We get quick about telling people, you know, that's wrong, and, and you tell them, well, we condemn other people. But then when it comes down to us, uh-huh. I need some grace. Uh-huh. I need mercy. And then we bad about, I'm going to preach this thing. We bad about sometimes saying, well, the church is so hypocritical, they this and they that. Where were you when somebody else needed grace? Uh-huh. And now you mad because you didn't get it back. And God is not mocked. Yes. Mm. Where were you? I listen to preachers sometimes who will begin to condemn other people. And then when they fall, first thing they want to say, the church is wrong. Y'all hypocrites. Y'all didn't give me no grace. Who did you give grace? When you were in your sin. When you needed somebody to forgive you and to love on you. Who did you love on? Like me on this who, who, did, who did you love on? But you want somebody to be there for you now. Yeah. Who were you there for? Come on, us out. Mm. You want mercy, but then you give mercy. Yeah. All right. You want mercy, but you give mercy though. I'm gonna tell you this for my people inside who are married inside of here. You know, we gotta give mercy to our spouse sometimes. That's right. We gotta give mercy. Amen. You know, when we mad about that, you know, it was it was something that <laughs> So they really did, and then I was like, you know, and uh, 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 and I was about to, and so I did, and really got to call me out on that. I said, you know, I was in my mind like, well, you did it too. <laughs> I was like something small, even that's something to happen. You know, God said, He told me something. He said, if you want mercy when she said to you, uh-huh. you know, I don't like when she said to me. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm just being real. I want to say this out here. I don't like it. I don't like to be called out and stuff like that. You just did it to yourself, didn't you? That's how you act when I say something to you. And God said, if you want mercy, you better hear me. You got to show mercy. Right. And God began to show me as many times that she could have said something. Y'all better hear me. That she did not say something. That's right. So if you want it, you better sow it. Right. And if you don't have enough to, of something, you have to start sowing that. Yeah. People say, I don't have enough money to give. I don't have enough uh, money to give to this. If you need money, you need to start sowing. That's right. Yep. That's how it works. If you need money, you need to start sowing. If you need honor, you need to start sowing that. If you need grace and favor, start sowing it now before you need it. And I'm telling you, y'all better get me. I'm telling you, if you sow that to other people's lives, they will be there for you. I remember when I was not saved, and I was not where I should be 
me in Christ. But I stayed inside the house of the Lord. I worked in the house of the Lord. I was inside of here. That when I was out there acting a the fool, guess what? Some people came inside this house of God right here. I did not have the experience of people begin to push me away. People condemn me. That is not my story. I had people coming up to me in the prayer line when I was sitting out in the audience and out and all the calls were going on, coming to me, crying over me, speaking over me, saying, Pastor, and I'm a pastor. I know that you're going through right now, but I still love you. God has grace and mercy over your life. He has favor over you. They could have came back there and condemned me. You know better than what you're doing. You should be trying to help your daddy. You should be trying to be in the ministry. Why are you acting the fool? You grew up in the church. No, baby. They gave me grace. And that is why now I'm going to preach this thing inside of here. Whether you like me or not, I'm going to give people grace. Whether you like me or not, I'm going to give them mercy. Because at the time, I know how bad it is, and if I want to receive it, I got to get it. Amen. And you're wasting your time waiting on a harvest of which you've not sown. Okay. Hallelujah. It's the seed in the soul, and you might as well sow big. You might as well sow very big. In 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, it says, the point is this. Whosoever sows sparingly shall will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Lord, I want to make sure I have a harvest. Let me put some seed in the ground. <laughs> I want to make sure that I can reap inside of my season. I don't want the pastor to preach out and say, you know what? The path of the season is now. The harvest is now. And I'm looking at Elder right now. And he has something to harvest. And I have nothing to harvest. And now I'm mad at him. But God says, when it was time to sow, you didn't sow. When it was time to put something in the ground, you put nothing in the ground. So don't get mad because he got honor now. Don't get mad because he has grace now. Don't get mad because he has favor now. Don't get mad because he has money now. He sold some money. He sold some honor. He sold some grace. He sold some mercy. And now whatever he put in the ground, he gonna reap it back. Somebody say amen inside amen. of here. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Calm down. So, I'm gonna come inside. Make sure that you work. Oh. Hallelujah. Work. Come on, y'all. Let's sing Because, see, you cannot just put something in the ground and walk away from it. That's right. That's it. Oh. That's it. Hallelujah. Ain't how it works. I wish it was, Maurice. I really wish it was. We dad would just go out there and plant. Leave us alone for about two months. <laughs> Not have us out there pulling at garden holes, watering plants. Uh -huh. Not have us out there pulling weeds early in the morning. My mom always said you got to pull them early in the morning because you wait later on. The ground gets hard. That's right. And so she was like, no, go out there and pull the weeds. We didn't want to pull the weeds. And guess what happens? So we go out there about 12 o'clock. It's hot and the ground has gotten hard now. Uh -huh. So I learned something about work. That if you want the plants to come out, you got to work. Yeah. Proverbs 14 and 23. I have this in my office. And if you want to have something to live by, read this. In all toil or work, uh -huh. there is profit. profit. But mere talk yeah. tends only to poverty. Yes. Uh-huh. Come on, help us out, It ain't about what you say. It's That's about what you right. do. Uh-huh. It's not about what you desire, and I, I'm going to speak these things. And no, 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 no. You can speak all you want to speak. That's right. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to go out and go work. work. Sowing is not enough. You have to work to cultivate what you planted. Planting is good. Talking is good. But there is no harvest without work. And if you want something to be productive, you must develop a work ethic. Yeah, right. In the house of God, what we want to do is lay hands on stuff and let it fix itself. We want, we, want, we want to say, you know, I'm going to pray on it. Let it fix itself. When you get through praying, baby, you got to work. Oh, when, we, when you get through seeking God for a word, you got to work. You must develop a work ethic. We cannot have sorry saints who want a harvest. Oh, the Bible says, for the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are fruit too. So we need some people that want to go out and work. That goes for your ministry. Come to me talking about what ain't working. You ain't working. That's right. That's right. It works if you work it, so work it. Work it. Come on, I'm just being real inside of here. Amen. You gotta put some work into those things. You cannot say, oh, as a pastor, I gotta work. Amen. I'm gonna tell y'all about work and commitment real quick. Now, this is just the truth. You know, my, my boy and I just played on Monday. All right. They were playing in Mexico on one night football. Mm -hmm. My boy and I was playing on Monday. But you know what? I had an assignment. Yeah. 
I had work to do with Bible study. Yeah. Got quiet. I didn't think I was talking about it. I don't think I was talking about it. I had Bible study. And you know, I said, you know what? If I want my people to be growing in Christ, I cannot just pray that they grow. I don't just pray that y'all will grow. I gotta work. Woo! If you want your ministry to work out, baby, you gotta work it. Woo! Get quiet inside it. You want your career to move? You gotta work. People don't gotta promote lazy people. They don't promote people where you gotta go back and check up on every time. And you wonder why I'm in the same spot. Because they tell you 30 minutes, you won't break for an hour and a half. They gotta go find you. They told you to show up at 7 o'clock. You out there in the parking lot to 7.15 talking. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then you want to clock in. Yeah. Right. But, yet, but yet, when you get to work, it takes you two hours to get ready to work. Come on, man. You better help. Better go get coffee. Uh -huh. Go visit. Uh -huh. Talk to everybody. Yeah. But yet, when it comes down for them to promote people, you want to come to me and say, Pastor, pray because I need a promotion. Pastor, please, I, I need you to pray, Pastor, because, you know, they're they moving people up, and it's my time. I've been there too long. No, 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 no. God, 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 bless me. It's my season. They, they, they said in church last Sunday, it's my season, Pastor. No, no, who is the season for? The person who was sowing that work inside of them. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Can I tell you that in truth and all honesty, that if you want your marriage to work, you got to work it? That's right. That's right. That's right. And sometimes there's nothing you can do about that. Sometimes you gotta have two people working now. I will say that. That's right. <laughs> but, but make sure the person that's not working is not you. That's right. Come on, Elder. You gotta work it. I had a man of God when I was younger. He told me, he said, you know, he said, you know, he was looking at, he was talking about, you know, this, this guy had looking at some other woman and stuff. And he said, you know what he told me? He said, if you put the same amount of work and money into that woman, into your wife, is that woman put into herself? You have a good marriage. All yeah. right now. You're preaching, Pastor. She's I single. She got you right now. <laughs> she got she she got all the things together. She put on for herself. He said, but if you really want to have that marriage working together, whatever work she put into herself, you put into that woman. Wow. That's right. And I had to learn something. That whatever that, that, that I want to see inside of my wife, I gotta put some work in. Yes, right. I gotta yeah. say the right things. Yes. I gotta work on myself sometimes. Yes. Because all the issues are not always her. Get married on the inside of here. Because sometimes we gotta work on the things that were put inside of us when we were kids. Yeah, that's right. Just because mommy and daddy did that don't mean that's your life. That's right. You did not marry your mama. You better hear me. You did not marry your daddy. Y'all get quiet in your life too. But sometimes it's some work needs to be done. The work needs to be done on us. That's right. Amen. Our family. Our dreams. Dreams don't come about unless they have work behind them. Everything needs some work. Now hear what I what, what, what Proverbs says in Proverbs 13 and 4. The soul of a sluggard craves. It wants stuff, but it gets nothing. You get nothing. While the soul of the diligent is rich in supply. We all want to harvest, but are we all diligently working to receive? All right now, I'm working. I'm going to preach y'all to y'all don't like it alone. It is not about what you want. Not about what you're craving. Yeah. It's about what you diligently work for. Right. If you want some things to change in your life, you gotta put some work in. That's right. If you wanna have a season where you don't have a great crop of blessings in your life, you gotta put some work in. I'm gonna tell you this even with our children. You gotta put work in. That's yeah. right. Amen. Just being real. You have to put work in. They're not gonna raise themselves. That's right. Yeah. And, I learned, you know, and I had to learn too that even though my son is 18, I still gotta raise him. I can't make him do anything in this age, but I still, at this point, I still must pour into him. That's right. I, I, I said this, and this is how I feel. You know, Deion Sanders is one of my favorite football players, one of my favorite coaches now. I can listen to him talk, because he's a man of God. He, he, he's a, a, a Christian. And I can listen to him talk and just write down stuff so I can preach that right there. He said something. He said, nothing, there's no point in success without a successor. That's right. Success is not success without success. So that means if I'm successful, it now behooves me to pour into somebody else. That's right. So they can succeed me. It is my goal that if I have a certain kind of a lifestyle, I want my sons to have better than me. That's right. It does not matter if I just give them money. Because a successor had to be able to take all the lessons you taught them and take them to another level. It's not just the money I give you. The lessons I teach you. Yes. And let me preach to people inside of here. I'm going to say it. And that's what I'm going to say. The truth. You want your kids to be different. You got to have them in Sunday school. Come on. You got to have them in church. Come on. You didn't lie. 
Bible keep, but is it true? Amen. You better read your own Bible. How are you going to teach them? Amen. Thank you. Keep going. Help us out, Elder. Keep going. All right. I get, 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 get too bad. I'm sorry. Yes, Lord. And, 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 and you understand this, say, you made me horrible in my life. Take the truth. Hey, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm a man of God and I'm a pastor. I read the word every night. I cannot teach that boy right over the 10 year old. I cannot teach him the way a teacher can. Because I am not and I am not skilled in pedagogy the same way. Pedagogy means how you treat, how you teach people who are kids. Am I right? So even though I teach college, I teach people in, who are grown. There's a certain level of way that I teach kids that I don't even know anything about. And I may have been about to get a PhD right now. And I may know all these things, but I have to know how to teach somebody who's teaching. Yes. And if I don't know it, at least I can begin to do the work and make sure somebody teaches them. Yes. And then we get mad at how they turn out.
It's one thing to be humble. It's another thing to lie. And I am not going to demean what God gave me. Because you feel like it convicts you. Baby, you better start slowly.
declares the Lord. When the plowman, the worker, shall overtake the reaper, the harvester, and the treader of grapes, him that sows the seed. So the person who's working will overtake the one who's putting seed out. And the one who's putting seed out will overtake those who are working. This is referring to, y'all better get me on this one, overlapping seasons. While you are sowing, God says, I'm going to let you reap. And while you are reaping, you are sowing for the harvest. Baby, I thank God for overlapping seasons. This doesn't make sense. There are boundaries between sowing and working and reaping. But God determines the boundaries and he can break them for your benefit. Therefore, I can sow, I can work, and I can reap in the same Oh, you ain't excited, but baby, I'm excited. Because while I'm sowing, I'm already reaping. While I'm working, I'm still sowing. God can set it up so he can sow and reap at the same time. The old saint said it like this. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Because while I'm reaping, I'm still sowing. I may have walked into a season. I may have walked into a harvest. But baby, I still got some season. I still got some season. I'ma still be sowing. I'ma still be working. While you're sowing, you better keep working. While you're reaping, keep sowing. It's the season to do all of it. Well, you better hear me. She multitasks. Oh, the Bible talks about her being there. 